Wasn't there that serial killer around here that looked you know, like you? Looked like me, yeah. The one they made a T-shirt yeah, of. Yeah. And it said like, it was like, I, I want to have you guys for dinner. Yeah. And everyone thought it was you. But the photo, the photo looks like me. Like it really does look yeah. like you. But look at this curve, it's made of granite. That was a trick. It's like the best curve in the world. Yeah. Sorry. Who are you? Stefan. Stefan? Yeah. Pro skater? Yeah. Stefan what? Janowski. I paid him to do that. You watch him skateboard, you watch him the tricks he does, his trick selection. It's all about flow. It's always been very like smooth and effortless, but it became also really difficult tricks. And he would do them with like such a casual and such an easy style. It's kind of like his personality too. It's pretty like at times super casual and super easy. The most I think I've ever seen from Stefan was he was like slightly cranky one day. It just seemed like he's just smiling all the time. He seems like a fucking like something out of Pac-Man or something. I think he figured out early on how to live. Wanna try it out? What's up? Welcome back to Epically Later. I'm on the Crucif float, so you know this episode is Stefan Janowski. I mean, the name Janowski is bigger than, I mean, bigger than the skater. The shoe blew up to one of the best-selling shoes of all time ever in skateboarding. But we're fans of his actual skateboarding. And the thing I like about Stefan is, is he really is your favorite skater's favorite skater. He kind of makes things look a little too easy in his parts. You don't know you're watching something hard because he's so smooth, so stylish, effortless. We're over here at Stefan's house, just floating in the pool, and we're gonna learn more. Stefan Janowski episode. I hope you enjoy it. How do you pronounce your name? Stefan Janowski. And what pronunciations do you usually hear? Oh, Stefan, Stephen, Stefan, Stefan. What do you say for the last name? Jan Janikowski? Janowski. Yeah, there's no W yet. Janowski. I'm a stickler with the names. I mean, even sometimes I swear when I'm introducing myself, I'm, I'm like Stefan, and it's it's a hard name to pronounce. I remember so many people would call him Stefan. Stefan. It's his parents' fault for giving him a weird Euro name. Crook, nose slide, 180 nose grind, or whatever. Like crook, back to nose slide, back to crook. That's what everyone did in Vacaville. Yeah. I'm from Vacaville. It's pretty, it's not too far from Sacramento. It's like um, on the freeway, the 80s, one straight line. It goes Sacramento, Vacaville, San Francisco. So it's like right in the middle, basically, between the two cities. But in, you know, 1992, it might as well have been like a deserted island. As a kid starting to get into skateboarding, you start looking at the magazines and videos and seeing this like big world. And I guess skateboarding really started my uh, a vow to leave Vacaville as soon as possible, you know? Me and my friends, we'd go to San Francisco every weekend, so like, something my parents would do is drive me to EMB, drop me off, and then they would go be in San Francisco, and then I would just skate there all day and then pick me up and go home. During the, embark the tail end of the Embarcadero days, like, I remember seeing just this little kid down there from time to time, and like, back then, like, there wasn't like a lot of little, t nine, you know, whatever, 11-year-old, 12-year-old skaters, so it kind of like would stick out. And he would just be off in the corner. I think his board got stolen there on his birthday. 15 stairs, and I'm going to slide them. <laughs> when I was younger, I was, I was like, of course, going to move to San Francisco as soon as this high school thing was done, you know? But San Francisco is really expensive and difficult to live. And Sacramento is really cheap and easy. So when I moved to Sacramento, um, it's like when I got my first apartment, I worked at like a whatever stupid bagel place and like prepping house painting and stuff. And then like I started skating with Brandon and Mike Rafter and these guys. Brandon was already sponsored. Mike Rafter was a pro skater. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do what these guys are doing. So I quit my job, moved out of the place and I moved in with Brandon. And uh, 
My first video part was digital number three. It's a funny part, you know, it's like still very like young. I had moved up to Sacramento, I moved up there. We got a spot together and we had a filmer staying at our house and he sent Stefan's footage down to Expedition just to kind of check in, here's what I've been up to and my footage was on there too. And they said, whoa, what's up? What's up with your buddy? Can, you know, and they wanted to put me on too. Awesome. <laughs> yes, ready? Yeah. Expedition was great because it was just like we were all really good friends like Richard, Kyle, Shani, uh, Chris Lambert, Carl Watson. And oh, yeah, that was a really good time. People were starting to real recognize, like, hey, this dude, is, this, he's got some special skills here. So the phone was ringing like crazy. You know, everyone was hitting him up. He's like, oh, I got to go meet with this dude, that dude, this dude, that dude. I got on Savier. Savier was a shoe company that Brad and Brian started. Brad asked me, and I did it because Brian was on the team because I love Brian Anderson. He was like so cool. We really liked his style and his skating, so of course we thought about him for Savier. And then Tim O'Connor was the next person on, and basically from the moment I met him, he just was trying to get me to quit and ride for Habitat. So Stefan and I rode for Savier Shoes together, and he rode for Expedition, and I, I would like, for like pretty soon after, I was like, get off the team. I'd call him up constantly, leaving messages on like his answering machine. And you know, it's like that old actual answering machine. And I'm like, get off, quit the team. Like, like, come on with us. So I was riding for Expedition and I get a call and it's from somebody, I, don't know, I think his name was Nino. And he says, hey, you know, this is somebody at Alien Workshop. And like, we really like your skating, blah, blah, blah. We were like wondering if you wanted to drive for Alien Workshop. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, oh man, I can't do that right now. Like I just like got an expedition. Like we're really good friends, whatever. And he was just like, all right, your career. And he hung up. And I was cracking up. I'm like, oh my gosh. And this was before I had met Tim. So then I met, I meet Tim. And he's like, you idiot, you said no to Alien Workshop. And I'm like, yeah, but I would ride for Habitat, you know? And then, and that is what, that's what put the bug in Tim, who then was pretty relentless on every Savio trip until I rode for Habitat. I was bummed, uh, but yeah, I was happy for him, dude. That, that's, you know, Habitat, we thought Habitat was the shit, you know, we loved it. He was so unique and Habitat was like building, so it was just like a perfect dude to get on there. So I was working for the workshop doing like graphic design and video stuff and um, Deirdick and I started talking about it like starting an offshoot brand, because there wasn't an, any offshoot brand from the workshop. Alien was really successful, and we had a lot of skaters that were interested in riding for Alien. We didn't have room for all of them. Joe was working for us. He had all this creative ability, and he kind of kept talking about maybe doing a brand. He wanted to do a brand. Joe has a vision, and they gave him a platform to like pursue it, and you know, a lot of people don't do that, which sucks, but when you do, and you try something, you could end up having something really great. And I mean, Habitat, you know, was on a fucking roll. So like my first trip was like in this van, like packed full capacity, like Kalis and Deerdick and Dill and everyone from Habitat and like um, just going all over, like traveling around the country. They got a ton of footage and it was all good. And we ended up using it in Mosaic. That was definitely my first video part where it was less like me trying to be a pro skater and it was more of like, here's me going on trips pro skating in a way. <laughs> I mean, it was in his prime and it was like, you know, when somebody's at that point where they're right before they're pro or right when they go pro and they're just out of the van, like immediately filming everything, you know? But I remember like we would get chunks of footage or, you know, like DV tapes. Of just, and I just, every time I was like, dude, this dude is getting like better and better, like every tape and just doing tricks that I'd never seen him do. When I first met Stefan, he was good. But I would say he got even better like in his like, like from when he was like 23 and on. I feel like he was like really good and then he got exceptionally good. He's done so many incredible things and he's had like a trillion parts. There was an era there where he was just dropping, you know, part after part and he would just stay on the road. He would, if I felt like he would never be at home at some point, he was just always on some trip and a part would drop every, felt like every couple months, you know? The going on trips and uh, going skating 
was actually, I paid more attention to that than video parts. Like I was never a big like over the shoulder editing my part or like, I'd film it and just go on with my day and either see it on a video or never see it again. Like I would just, was more of like, we're going to Australia, we're going to Barcelona. And then I'd be excited to skate these new places or places that were different and I just wanted to skate everything. What draws me to skaters a lot of the time or maybe keeps me calling them back is when it is easy. Cause usually it's kind of like hard cause you're trying to do all the shit to make them get tricks. With him, he's like, he's really mellow. He's not like, oh, there's someone over there. Like those people are talking there in my line of sight. Like he's not that person. He's just very kind of like, oh, you know, kind of spacey-ish. Very mellowed to film with. Stefan also has this other skill uh, that he's so relaxed in his own skin. He would try stuff for the first time and be so relaxed about it that he should have been eating shit, but like would just step out, like didn't know he should have fallen or something like that and still be on his board. Like I think some other people would agree that that was maybe his best skill, was just being the most comfortable in his own skin out of anybody I've ever met in my life. You recognize like how difficult what he's doing is only after you realize like, oh, he just makes it look like so easy and it's so graceful and it's almost like he doesn't even care about what he's doing. It's sort of like the, the defining feature of his skating. It kind of looks like he's not trying that hard, but it's like really hard and it looks really good. He switch flipped this double set in Australia. I went to that double set and it was like twice as big as I thought that it was just from how he did it. Um, and I feel like that's like kind of how he did a lot of his shit. Oh! Yes! Yes! I was so fucking insane. Fuck yeah, dude. That was so sick. How you feel? Like getting a beer. When I started getting on the shoe companies, like even on Xavier, I had a, a sample for a pro shoe, but Everyone else quit before me. I'm like, what? Where is everyone? All of a sudden, I'm at Xavier and just like, hey. After Xavier, got on Etnies. Had a sample with Etnies. Got cold feet. He quit right before it came out. So they changed the name to The Faction. And I rode for Etnies shortly after he quit. So when I got on Etnies and I saw The Faction, I was like, holy shit, this shoe is amazing. And everybody at Soltech, they're like, yeah, Stefan's such an idiot. He would have made so much money off this shoe. Like, it's selling like crazy. Like, he blew it. He should have never left. Hunter Marrera, he, he worked at Xavier, and he became the team manager of Nike. Brian rode for Nike. Omar was on Nike. Reese was on Nike. Like, all of my friends, and they're just, like, traveling all around, having a great time. And Omar's like, basically stay, like living with me sometimes. So like he would come back from all these like really fun trips and uh, that was it. I was just like, hey, I want to get on Nike too. So when I got on Nike, uh, they said, you know, hey, uh, you know, you can get on the team, but Paul Rodriguez is the only signature athlete. We're not doing other signature shoes. And I, I just said, yeah, sure, fine. I don't, that doesn't, that's not a big deal. So fast forward, I had the nothing but the truth part and the inhabitants part. And um, a couple years later, they just approached me and said, um, we're going to do shoes and you're the next one. I said, great. And then we have some meetings and they have um, their ideas of what my shoe's gonna be. And then I have my ideas and uh, they were very different. There was a model that was, hey, this, what do you think about this? Not necessarily, hey, this is your shoe, but like, yeah, what do you think about it? And then Hunter, you know, why don't you go and talk about how great it is? It was never going to be the shoe. Like I didn't, I said, oh, okay, that's nice, but no, um, these are the specifications that I will be needing. <laughs> I would always um, sit with the shoe designers They would ask me if I wanted to do anything and I would just be like, hey, Nike hired you guys to be designers. They hired me to skate, so I'm not gonna step on your toes. Like I'm down for whatever. And, uh, and Stefan is totally different in that way. You know, he was really, hands-on with his shoe, really um, adamant about what he wanted. Stefan said this, he goes, I want my shoe to be so thin and so low that my ankles bleed when I'm doing switch flips. I was saying that because they weren't getting how slim I wanted it. But it goes against all of the innovation performance first aspects of what Nike SB 
was building upon with the EQ URL and then PROD. It was the antithesis of that. There'll be certain things and technology that, that Nike's working on that they'll really like, we need to implement this in this shoe this time, you know? And I don't think Stefan was going for it. For skating, I didn't need any technology, so I wanted to take, to go backwards in a way, take away all the technology, but still it's performance, but it's just performance over protection. Because a lot of the things that people put in skate shoes is because they think they're protecting your feet from your skateboard and the ground, but they're compromising your style and they're compromising the performance because with a giant shoe, it's harder for me to do tricks than with a slim shoe. When I put my shoes on, I need them to be my foot. Me and James Arazumi, who was designer, I would talk to him. He would bring things to a group of people who would then tell Hunter or him to tell me to agree or whatever. And then I would say, no, you tell them no. He was really angry and frustrated. Really angry is a big statement. He was super frustrated and, and uh, really wanted what he wanted. Nike, when I finally said, this is the rendering, make the sample, they were at a point where they were just like, ah, just whatever. Yeah, sure. Leadership on the Nike set at the time, like, can we sell this thing for X amount of money? Like, that was that doubt. I don't think Stefan had that, that fear. He knew what he built was insane, and it was, again, what, exactly what he wanted. I don't think a shoe took off like, like you know, like hotcakes, but uh, when it did, it fucking hit. <laughs> I first saw like all the kids at the skate park with him, and then, you know, he started to see then just the people walking by the skate park, and then people at the airport, people in the grocery store, you know, backpackers in Barcelona, and it's just everywhere. But it was a, it took a few years till it had its tipping point. He had just ended up making a shoe that was kind of the right thing for, you know, literally everyone was wearing that shoe. For me, when I would think about designing shoes, like skate shoes at Adidas skateboarding, I would think, I want to design a sneaker that's skatable versus a skate shoe and pigeonhole it. You know, it's an easy shoe for everyone. That's the win, you know, that's what you want to do. I did hear that he supposedly has, him and Michael Jordan are the only people in like China who have like their own like wing of a building. Jordan, Janoski, uh, yeah, that's true. And you said you only wear your shoe? Yeah. I sometimes get sick of shoes. Oh, that's how good mine are. I don't even have any other shoes. You get married in your shoes. Yeah. I work out in them. I get married in them, go to funerals in them, go to skating. I just wear my shoe. It was designed incredibly well. It, it was so, was such a simple shape, you know, but shape is everything. The whole interior design of it was it just seamless with like synthetic suede and there's like all the joining seams were like super clean. So it was an experience. Um, something that's so simple and easy was just done, done so well. It's crazy because his skating is so legendary and it's crazy how like his shoe transcended even beyond that. A lot of times people will be asking me questions about the shoe and then I have to explain to them that I'm a skateboarder. Like I didn't, I'm not a shoe designer, well I am, but I didn't get to design the shoe because of my shoe designing, it's because of my skateboarding is the reason why I got to do the shoe. I did an article called, in the last two years called, My Life as a Shoe, the Stefan Janowski story. But it was basically just like all the funny shit about people not knowing that the Janowski is a person. <laughs> they had a fucking symposium at Nike where they like, just so you guys know, here he is. <laughs> they thought it was a made up word, like, like a schlurked, like the name of an Ikea item. You know, there's a lot of people out there that don't know who Stefan Janowski is, but like you're gonna see that shoe and most likely say that's the Stefan Janowski, but you don't even know what, the, what he looks like. Stefan's the new Chuck Taylor, right? He said that, he, I want this to be the Chuck Taylor of, uh, of skateboarding. And I don't even know what, if Chuck Taylor was a real person, I think he was a rep or something like that. And that's exactly what he did. That name, the, the Janoski, or whatever other people call it, it's going to be known beyond him, and it will be a legacy within, this, within skateboarding for Nike. It was really part of Stefan's plan to make that thing bigger than maybe what people saw in skateboarding ever before. It was like a perfect moment of his skating, of his personality, and the design he wanted 
and a shoe like that being needed. You know, oh, he hit the jackpot with that design. It's him. It's not luck. He's a professional skater that put out a ton of footage, just sick ass parts. And he went in there and pushed for that design, you know what I mean? So if he would have just been like, let them take advantage and been like, no, do whatever you want, then he wouldn't be in the position he's in. I think the, that's the way the story should go. I feel like there's always been some sort of like weird kind of drama with it, like as far as, you know, people thinking he's a billionaire, you know, or something, you know, something, something crazy. The gossip was like, he's got the best selling shoe in skateboarding. They, they're making 19 different colors of it. He's rich. So there was a rumor that Nike bought my name off me and it's not true. I don't know where that came from. Um, I've actually um, looked into selling my name since learning about it and so far no takers. It wasn't like he went about his skate career trying to make the most money as possible, but now he is like, probably made the most money out of skating at everybody, which I think is hilarious and amazing at the same time. Not a lot of things change with him because of the success of that shoe. You didn't see some sort of transformation of this whole new person. No, he just, he stayed the same, you know? I know Stefan wouldn't ever allow, like, him to be compromised, like, him, himself because of money or this and that. Like, that's just, that's how that dude is. He just was still the sweetest, and now he does stuff to look more like he's rich, like gets fucking manicures all the time and shit. I asked him the other day, I'm like, when's the last time you clipped your own fingernails? He's like, that's a good question. And uh, he's like, I, yeah, it's been a long time, been a long time. What are those things made out of? Rare um, fucking porcelain, nice. yeah, yeah. Longevity is like hard in skateboarding. There's not tons of people who are, have these long careers that are like still going. And definitely the shoe has helped with that. Um, but I think just skateboarding in general, just as be, being a pro skateboarder and making a living off that has given me the freedom to explore all the other things I'm interested in. Art and painting and uh, sculpting and like stop motion films and yeah, like making music and stuff like that. The way he is with his painting and the way he plays music and all this stuff, he's just, he's super, super talented at, at all these different things. I mean, even to the point of like his sculptures that he's doing now, these brass sculptures where he starts making clay and molding little things with clay. And then next thing you know, he's got brass sculptures that are insane. You need financial independence in a lot of cases to have the freedom to experiment and to noodle around. And what I love about Stefan's art is that it's like, yeah, he's playing around. He's doing whatever he wants. Like, what would you do with the shoe deal? I'd buy a bunch of shit that I don't need. He, like, taught himself how to do bronze casting. Randomly, one day, he's like, I made a pool floaty. I'm like, oh, yeah, what is it? He's like, cruise float. Like, float your sins away or I don't, something like that. I think he was doing stuff because he was, like, just bored. Like, I can make that. I can do that. I, I can do this. I can do that. I think there's a minute where he kind of, like, disappeared from, not from skating, but just kind of, like, he didn't need to skate. He probably made so much money that he's like doing way less. I don't know. It seems like he's just having fun with skating right now. How often do you skate? Four or five times a week, probably. Like, you know, depending. Sometimes I get really, like, take a day off, like, get sore. Who do you skate with? <laughs> I skate with Guy Mariano. That was a good grind. And there was some oh, and some oh, sand. Bro, I should have been wearing the journals on that, man. Was, Come on. We go out and film each other with our phones. Kind of like back to, uh, you know, when you're like the young group of kids and everyone skates, but whoever's doing a trick, the other person stops to film. And then like you take turns being the filmer and it's just kind of like really fun and light. Stefan has become even a better filmer than me. Not only is he a better skateboarder, but a better filmer and it really breaks my heart. I had to get good quick because he's always trying the hardest fucking tricks. It is cool in this day and age where people go to places like Instagram to, to see your skateboarding, that he's out with Guy and, you know, their selfie stick, and that's awesome. Lately, clearly, he's been skating. Like, you're seeing clips, and he's, like, legit skating. Anything above 40 is fucking crazy. People say, like, yeah, you don't even have to skate anymore. But it's like, 
Like, I want to. I know he wants to. He wouldn't be out doing it if he didn't want to skate. It just seems like he happens to be skating because he's having fun, and he wouldn't push himself to skate if he didn't feel like it. I would say he's like one of those dudes that really still enjoys it and gets excited, you know? Like, I mean, when other people are skating and getting tricks or whatever, like, he's genuinely excited for himself and other people. Like, he's happy. He's a happy dude. That one was sick! That was the best one for sure! Dude, I think I killed it on the filming, too. He's such a good dude, and he's got such a good morale, and just his attitude in general is just, like, super, super good. Everybody still just is, like, so attracted to him, and he's just got such a welcoming, welcoming personality, and he's always got something weird that he's thinking about. There was nothing ever bad that, you know, that Stefan did, or it's just nothing sticks out. Like, I don't know. Maybe that he played guitar too much, like everyone else on Habitat picked up that shit. He's never really had any substance issues, never didn't seem to ever, from what I can tell, go through any serious dark depression. Like, everything's pretty steady. I think you're gonna have a hard time with this episode because you might have just found that one guy that it seems like things are not necessarily very hard. I'm sure things are hard, but the way he deals with life and deals with things, it seems like he's got to figure it out. He really seems to be enjoying himself. So I think whatever decision he made was the right one. Hot babe wife, traveling around, smiling. It's nice to think that money could bring you happiness. I, I'm not saying that's what happened, but it's nice to think that it sometimes could because you meet all these completely miserable rich dudes all the time. You're like, you're rich, you're married to a movie star, and you're miserable all the time. What is wrong with you, sir? That's not Stefan, that's somebody else. Here's what I need. I'm just gonna tell you what I need. Okay. Everyone has nice things to say about Stefan. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Charmed life. It's, it's hard, it's hard, because he I is, because need... he's that guy. He... But you're, you're, you kind of have like an edge. Okay. You know, like. I like coaching me up to like say something negative about Stefan. Give me, give me, give me some. <clears throat> I'll give you, he's not circumcised. 